Hello all and welcome back to the studio. Um, you're not going to see my face very much in this video because we're going to be talking about uh, the coping saw uh, and really what you need to focus on is the tool. So this is the coping saw, uh, quite a bit different than the Ryoba saw which we've already covered. Here's that Ryoba saw. Uh, you can see that the huge difference is the size of that blade where the Ryoba saw has this very, very wide blade that's designed for sort of like positioning itself against the wood inside the cut to keep your cut nice and straight and clean. This saw is designed for a very different purpose. Uh, if we look really carefully at that blade, you can see it's just very, very thin in this direction. That allows it to do something like a great, clean, scrolling cut like the one I've marked out here. So the Ryoba saw is made for good, sharp, uh, crisp uh, cross cuts and rip cuts that are straight. This saw is designed very much for making curved and more delicate scrolling cuts. And again, it has everything to do with that tiny thin blade. You can also see, uh, I hope uh, that we're getting a focus there, that it's got teeth that are all facing downward in this case, all right? That means that it's designed for a pull in this direction. Cut, not cut. Cut, not cut, okay? It's always going to, as, as the, currently as the blade is situated, it's designed for a pull cut. For me, that's a real advantage because if I'm getting down to make a cut like this and I would get low to do it, as I sort of cut, I'm cutting when I go down. When I do that, it's keeping all my sawdust falling out of the bottom, okay? That's a benefit because it doesn't sort of like build up and block my view as I'm making my cut. The other thing that I like about that is that when your sort of like blades come out, they leave a little bit of torn wood. And that torn wood could also be a little bit of a distraction. It's hard to see what you're doing. So the torn wood is going to end up on the bottom of our cut and I'm going to have a much easier time following my scrolled line. Just quickly, a few things you should know is that this saw is quite adjustable, okay? So like if as you're cutting, you need or you feel that you want to see your blade turn a little bit, you can turn your knob on the top and the handle at the bottom and actually contour that blade, it's going to be a little hard to see, so that it turn, you're actually making the blade turn as you go. You can actually control it from up here. You can kind of cut a little bit, turn your blade, cut a little bit, turn your blade. It's not crucial, but it's one little sort of like micro adjustment that can kind of help you make a good, clean, tight cut. Now, you loosen and tighten that blade by just turning the handle which is actually on a threaded screw, uh, which terminates here with this little holder. You can see there that the blade is held in place uh, by its positioning, rel you know, the little, there's a little sort of like bump on the, built into the blade that uh, gets caught against this little flared tip that holds it in place. That's true on both ends of the saw. The little threaded knob here gives you a tightening and adjusting uh, options, as does uh, the handle down this way. Now, you can, uh, if you need to remove the blade and replace it, you can loosen. You just want to be careful not to over-loosen or your whole saw will come apart, but you can loosen both the top knob and the bottom until you get to a place where you're loosen enough, okay, that you can actually... I don't want it to come apart on me, that you can actually lift this saw blade out like that. Let me try to get it in the screen or position it back. You can see there's a little slot right there that accommodates, there we go, that accommodates that blade uh, and locks it in place. So now all I have to do to kind of get it back and ready to go is tighten the bottom handle Tighten the top knob. I like to tighten the tight, tighten the top knob mostly first. Uh, give myself a little room for adjustability, and then go ahead 
and finish off my tightening down low. I like to go until the blade is really rigid and doesn't want to move very much. I can still get a little bit of micro adjustment out of it, but it's nice and taut. It's like taut like a string in a bow. Okay, so there we go. We understand the way the tool kind of comes apart, the way we can kind of adjust uh, the positioning of, of the blade, okay, in case we want some more refined scrolling. Overall though, we want that to hold nice and steady and still while we're making our cut. So I'm going to adjust it nice and straight up and down right now. And then what we're going to do is take a little time and try to make this scrolling cut that I've outlined here in pen. Now, this is a relatively simple procedure. I like to get down low so I can see my work. And I position this particular uh, mechanism, or I mean, I'm sorry, uh, workbench, so that I can get down here. I could also pull up a little stool if I wanted to. I don't have one handy, but I could do that because this is a process that takes a little time. And what I want to do is I want to start at the bottom of my blade because remember, it's a pull cut. I'm going to start at the bottom of my blade and just work my way in. Okay, nice and slow. This is another example. And you can see I'm still getting some sawdust regardless. This is a nice example and I'm going to zoom in a little for you. Okay, we'll put our focus right there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and you can see I'm not rushing. I'm just taking my time and I'm just doing my best to follow that line. I'm blowing on it. Whoop. Getting a little bit of chatter when I my board's kind of vibrating a little bit, so I'm just going to take it easy. Not try to do it all at once. Take my time. And you can see that just little by little, I can make that cut. I can find a rhythm. Again, I'm making all my cuts on the pull. I'm using my hand as kind of an additional stabilizer. Okay, and if I get to a point, now I'm going to turn my blade just a little bit so I can get it to kind of follow that contour more readily. Beautiful. You can see, not a fast process. Take your time, go slow productive slowness. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually now just going to go ahead and I'm going to pull my blade out and I'm going to go around to the other side and finish making my cut from over here because I feel like that's going to be more efficient for me. So hopefully everything can still be seen, no trouble. Okay. Now I'm not a left-handed cutter, but just for fun, I'm going to give it a try. Because it's all slow and careful, I'm just going to come in and try to cut with my left hand, which is not my dominant hand. Typically, I'm more comfortable cutting with my right hand. Now I'm having a little bit of control issue. I'm a control freak. So I'm just going to go ahead, well I've got the tripod set up in a way that makes it kind of difficult, but I'm just going to come in and I'm going to continue making my pull cut. Following, carefully controlling the direction. Trying to get a full cut with each pull downward as I move toward my final destination. Hopefully I'm not getting my head in the way. No, it looks like I'm okay. Until I'm able to span that entire distance and cut it out. Now you saw there's a little bit of abrupt end there. As you reach the end, I encourage you to move a little bit more slowly because you do have the potential of coming down on yourself, which was a risk there. So you can see I made a relatively clean and nice 
Scrolled cut. That is exactly what we're trying to accomplish, a controlled, slow scrolling cut. You saw that that took a little time. Be patient, don't rush. Take your time, do this as carefully and as thoughtfully as you can, always looking after your own safety. That is the scroll saw. You've seen a little bit about how you go ahead to sort of, you know, you adjust the blade, change the blade, experiment with that, make sure it's nice and taut when you're using it. Take your time, get low, be right there down with your work. Really work to can kind of control those pulls. Don't let it get out of control. Don't try to hand hold it ever. Um, hope that sort of like gets you through the first phase of the coping saw use. If you have any questions, send me an email and let me know.